Good morning to everyone. Welcome to hearing number 13 of 182 period of sessions. This hearing is about case 12934A, patients of the psychiatric service of the Santo Tomas Hospital in Panama has been requested by Frank Ulysses Gelfi Aguilar and Ana Paula Figueroa. I am here joined by my dear sister, Commissioner Margaret May, my colleague, my dear colleague, Joel. Then Commissioner Stuardo will join us as well. And my dear Marisol Blanchard, ad hoc executive secretary, for uh, the system of cases. The goal of this hearing is to deepen the pleading on the merits of the parties and address the uh, request made by the petitioners. We will receive declaration of Ana Dori Zapata, widow of Denis Uriel Requenes, and the statement made by the state, Dr. Marcel Pena, chief of the Department of Psychiatry of the Santo Tomas Hospital, regarding the uh, dismissal of Dr. Frank Gelfi and the facts um, related to the violations to the uh, other alleged victims. I will now give the floor to the ad hoc executive secretary to explain the methodology. Marisol, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Good morning to everyone. This case is related to the alleged responsibility of the state of Panama regarding um, malpractice to persons with discapacity, patients of the psychiatric ward of Santo Tomas Hospital and obstacles to access justice by relatives and the lack of due diligence in the investigation uh, and punishment of the alleged fact. The commission approved the admissibility report 9413, admitting this uh, request in connection to uh, judicial protection and judicial guarantees. In 2018, the Commission communicated the state that the case will be divided in three parts. This hearing is related to uh, case 12934A, as it has been um, described, is aimed at deepening the pleadings of the parties and receive information regarding the current uh, situation of the case. Also, we will hear the statement of an elect victim and a witness. Regarding distribution of times, the statement by Ana Zapata will have a questioning by the petitioners for 10 minutes. Then the state will have 10 more minutes to ask questions and the commission will have 10 minutes to ask questions to Ana Zapata. This person should uh, respond after each question. Maricel Pena is also a witness offered by the state. We'll have the same time distribution, 10 minutes for her statement, then questioning by the state, and then the petitionary party will have 10 minutes and the commission will have 10 minutes as well. Now, we will start hearing the uh, pleadings of the uh, parties for 10 minutes, and then the commission will have time to ask questions. I give you back the floor, Madam President. Thank you. Our Secretary for Petitions and Cases, Marisol Blanchard. Now I will give the floor to Mrs. Ana Doris, widow of um, Mr. Dennis Uriel Requenes for her statement for 10 minutes. You have the floor. Okay. 
Muy buenos días. Good eh, morning. Honorable Commissioners and Delegation of the State of Matama of Panama. I'm Ana Paula Figueroa. I am the representative of the victims in this case. And I'm going to ask questions to Ana Zapata, the widow of Reckoness. The first question is, please tell me what was the attention received by your um, husband, uh, Denis Uriel Requenes by doctors within the psychiatric unit in Santo Tomas, and whether you can identify uh, these doctors. Also, what was the impact within your uh, family as a result of what happened to your late husband? Good morning to everyone. I'm going to, to be brief and precise about what happened. My husband had been under treatment for seven years in Santo Tomas with Rangel Fee. Then he was treated by Dr. Pena. There's a sound that does not allow us to listen properly to the statement. There was a change in her in his medication. And as a result of this change in his treatment, my husband suffered a deterioration in his health in less than a week. And he was taken to the hospital for several, several times. One, two, three times. I'm sorry, Madam Commissioner. Can I give my computer to Mrs. Anna because we cannot uh, listen to her? Please, yes, the uh, sound is, uh, the noise is terrible. Please, my suggestion, Ana Paula, and we want to express our solidarity to Ana Doris, is that we start now because the sound, the noise was terrible. Let's uh, start all over again. Technical uh, challenges affect us all. Please, let's uh, start again. Okay, my name is Ana Paula Figueroa. I am the representative of the victims and petitioners in this case. And my question is, my first question to Ana Zapata, a widow of Reckoness, is what was the attention received by her late husband, by um, doctors within the psychiatric ward in the Santo Tomas Hospital, and whether you can identify who these doctors were also, Mrs. Anna, what was the impact within your family uh, as a result of what happened to your late husband? Good morning once again. I'm going to try to explain in 10 minutes what happened after 17 years. My husband was suffering from uh, depression and he was um, in uh, Unit 25 with Frank Welfi, with Dr. Frank Welfi. And after seven years of treatment, we had learned about how to treat this disease, how to use medication, because I used to go to meetings on how to deal with these kind of patients. We know how they are treated many times because of their uh, disease. After some time, we got to a solution and his doctor was uh, changed, Dr. Marcel Pena and Dr. Crasio. And 
there was a change in his medication as well. In the last week, I saw a deterioration. Um, my husband was going through. The situation was such that he used to tell me, how can I get out of this? I cannot get better. Why? I went to the hospital twice to explain what was going on with my husband. One of the first times Dr. Crancio was there and I told him, doctor, my husband is not uh, taking the same medicine. This is a different one. He hasn't slept for 24 hours. He walks and walks. These are situations we, ha we haven't seen before, symptoms we hadn't seen before. He does not eat. He said, I don't feel well, we are human beings. But then I had an interview with Dr. Marcel Pena in his office, and I was explaining the situation to him. And doctor told me, you should talk to my assistant, to my colleague. And I told him, doctor, please understand this is what's happening. This has never happened before. And we took him to the emergency unit because he was not well. I came back to the unit 25 and I found Dr. Welfi and I, I said, please send me something. And he said he couldn't. He said that it was not his patient, that it was not ethical. But I saw the condition of my husband. And when I explained to Dr. Pena what was going on with my husband, his answer, unfortunately, because I, I think I'm sorry I made these comments, but they treat you as they see you. And doctor told me, maybe you have not realized that your husband is undergoing a very bad situation. And it's very sad to try to find a solution. My husband, I, I couldn't tell this to my husband. I couldn't say there was another solution and we have to keep on taking the same medicine. This was an unbearable situation. I'm going to say something. We didn't have any wealth, but in my house, there were values. There was love at home. My children loved their father because he was a good father. So at home, when he said, I don't want my children to see me like this. I don't want my children to see me like this. They gave him letters and they passed this letter under the door tell him, telling him that we need you, that, that we need you to get better. And he told me, Anna, please help me. I cannot get better that's why i kept on going to the hospital trying to find out what was going on because he couldn't leave he couldn't get better he couldn't overcome that situation i have three children one of them was very little but uh, my other kids who were 13 or 14 years old they told me why my father did that if my father loved us why did he commit suicide how can i explain to a kid why my dad decides to take his life because he he wets his pants why did i have to go through this situation it was very hard to continue with raising my children only god knows how many times i suffocated my scream begging for my children to grow up healthy but after this i went to the hospital 
many people welcomed me and they wanted to hide me. And I was asking for Dr. Guelfi because I felt my children needed psychological help. And I couldn't find him. He didn't work there any longer. And what happened? I had to beg God, please help them because I cannot help them. I had to work. I ironed clothes. I washed uh, floors. I painted um, huge walls like a man because I said, I ha why do I have to beg? I have taught my children values. And after going through the situation, we could say, what, what do we need these values for if no one cares about other people's lives? But I can say that after this situation, I try to get to an agreement to when we had this friendly settlement process to get to an agreement and i recorded many videos talking about what happened sometimes we need to say what happened in order to feel better to explain the situation my husband went through and when we got to a friendly settlement to get to a friendly settlement to say this is over, no more memories, but this did not happen. This did not happen because the parties did not comply with this agreement. And this is like a construction that was not over. The building is not complete, but it doesn't matter. The administration changes. There was no reparation, psychological reparation or any reparation. Mrs. Anna, a second question. Could you tell us how your life was affected due to the lack of compliance of the state of this uh, friendly settlement agreement? Once more, I believe that this has been a joke. Our value as human beings, it doesn't matter. They don't care about us, human resources, at least, that's how I feel. I feel my hands tied, not my hands, but my mouth because my voice was not heard. There was no testimony. They did not pay attention to this situation, to this pain. What we want is to forget, to forget, to move on, to have peace, to be able to continue with our lives because life, the uh, world does not stop and our life continues. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Uh, because of time, uh, we have reached the first 10 minutes. Thank you, Anna, for your voice, for your fight, for expressing your pain. Um, the Commission's commitment is to guarantee the protection of rights. I also would like to thank Ms. Ana Paula Figueroa. And now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state for the questions to uh, Ms. Uh, for the victim, for Ana. The representatives of the state now have the floor. Thank you, Vice President. My name is Rui Hires. I'm the legal secretary of the foreign ministry. And the representatives of the state include the following. Ariana Perez that is the chief of the human rights department of the foreign ministry of Panama, who will be presenting the allegations on behalf of the state. Dr. Farah Urrutia, that is the uh, representative for of the mission of uh, Panama before the OAS, Diego Mas, that is lawyer and legal representative, and Monica Montenegro, that is chief of the nutrition department that will be represented at uh, Santo Tomas Hospital. I would like to give the floor now to Dr. Urrutia. Thank you. Uh, 
under director, vice director, commissioners. Good morning. On behalf of the state, we would like to send a message of solidarity to we, the widow of Mr. Requenes. We would like to thank the commission for this hearing. We understand the situation you've been gone, going through. So we are going to make just a few questions, taking into consideration your statement. Our question has to do with the time during which your husband received medical attention from the Santo Tomas Hospital. You presented your complaints before the system, before the general directorate of the hospital, um, because you were saying that you felt that your husband was suffering the effects of the change of medication. Is that right? Yes. I realized this and I asked Dr. Welfi, my husband was hospitalized in the ER room and he, the doctor explained me, explained me that I had to write a letter for the director of the hospital so that my husband would receive the necessary treatment but this would not take two or, or three days. That took time and we didn't have time. Why did you decide to present your complaint through Dr. Sandwich? Uh, you filed a complaint before the IACHR and you decided to do that uh, complaint through one of the doctors. Um, he represented an opportunity to me. Uh, we are just here to search for justice because we cannot do anything for my husband. Whatever, whatever we say, my husband uh, is not here. I'm well aware of this, but there are more patients there. What is your relationship with Dr. Frankway? After he took care of my husband, I went to him because of the situation of my children. My oldest son remained speechless, uh, didn't talk. After seeing he, her dad, one of my daughters was became very uh, difficult to deal with. And with regard to uh, my other children, some of them reacted as if I did not do what was necessary for my husband. Thank you. On the side of the state, we don't have more questions, Commissioner. Thank you, Dr. Farah, representative of the state. Thank you for your questions. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleagues. Uh, Commissioner Estuardo said that he was not able to connect because of internet issues. So first, I would like to give the floor to my dear Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay for her questions. You can go ahead, Commissioner Margaret. Um, thank you very much, um, Madam Vice President and, and Chair of this um, hearing. Um, if I could um, just uh, synthesize, uh, say hello, first of all, to everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a very early morning for me here um, in the West um, Washington state. It's just past 6 a.m. And um, so it's very, very dark outside still. Um, but I'm here to listen to this, uh, this very sad um, instances in this case. Um, Ms. Mrs. Um, Zapata, um, let me first sympathize with you and your family um, about the loss of your husband. And firstly, about seeing him struggling and hoping to get better before he took his life. Um, well, my question, my first question is, did you throughout the suffering of your husband and your seeking for 
the best treatment for him, dealing with the doctors, the administrators, and so on. Did you feel ever feel that you were being not being listened to because you said you were not being heard? You, you know, um, did you feel that this was because you were a, a poor woman, a woman, and a woman who didn't have much money as well? Did you feel that this was why they were not hearing you? Could you make the translation, please, to the question of the commissioner? La traducción, por favor, de la pregunta. Translation. We have simultaneous translation. We have simultaneous translation. You can choose the interpretation channel. You need to select the channel, but I can translate the question for you. What Commissioner Margaret was asking is if you, during the treatment, if you felt that you were not being heard because you were a woman of, uh, with poor resources and if you felt discriminated for not having enough money. And one more thing. Thank you, Secretary of Petitions and Cases, dear Marisol. And for being a woman, apart from your economic resources for being a woman. And uh, I wanted to let you know one thing. On Zoom, you have an icon that it's interpretation. You can choose the icon to listen to the interpretation into Spanish, from English into Spanish. But that's a question. Your status as a woman and the lack of economic resources uh, since you were more vulnerable, I would like, we would like to know if that had an impact. Maybe you were not here because of that. I don't think that it was because I was a woman, but I said this before, I was treated as I was seen. And if you are demanding attention, and they tell you, they told me, go to a colleague. So you, that person was not considering me as important as other people. And that's why they refer me to others. They discriminated me because they didn't consider me as an equal. Um, I'm I'm not sure if I understand that. Uh, did they consider you an, um, as being unequal or being discriminated against because of your lack of resources, mm. or because you were a woman? That's that's the I I, I need to understand how you felt. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. I would like to ask uh, Ms. Anna, did you hear the interpretation, the translation? Were you able to understand the question? Yes. I don't think that this is because I was a woman. It was because of the resources. Uh, that is what uh, I was at the moment uh, I, uh, because, I understand. Of, because of that. I understand that. Now, now I understand. And, and in relation to the, the failure to uh, proceed with the friendly settlement agreement, why do you think that that, that is the case that happened? You know, you haven't received reparations of any kind. Why, why do you think that is? Basically, in that regard, I think that the case was not considered as important. And it did not work. We 
believe that we did everything that we had to do. So the other party had to do the same, to comply with things, but they did not comply with what we had agreed upon. We agreed upon something, but they did not observe that. They don't care. Um, we believe that everything was going to be settled, but it did not work out. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you, thank you very much. I think I leave the further question to to my my uh, brother and sister commissioners, who you will understand directly. But again, please accept my sympathy for you and your children, and I hope you will all be better in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret, for your questions. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Joel, who will have time to ask questions. Thank you, Madam President. First, I would like to send my uh, affection and my solidarity to Ms. Zapata and her children. I would like to show my solidarity in these difficult times. I would like to ask a question for you. I would like to know what uh, the authorities of Panama, of Panama said, What, how they did react after the passing of your husband. Did you receive any support, any follow up? Uh, how, what happened after your husband died? To be honest, we did not receive any support. Any public official helped us. We did not receive any support. When I visited the hospital to, for my children to receive support, they did it, but I went only three times to one of those institutions because the, our psychologist was gone because we couldn't pay or afford one. That's all on my side, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Joel. As country reporter for Panama, I have two questions for Ms. Anna. The first is whether you or your husband receive information on the medical treatment that was to be provided if there was prior consent. I was uh, paying attention to the medication, to the doctors and so on. Did you consent to those treatment treatments? That's my first question. Uh, I don't understand what you are asking. I will clarify. Did you accept the treatment and the medication that your husband was going to receive? I don't understand. Did you agree with the treatment that they were going to give your husband? Well, no. Of course, because everything was different. To be honest, I knew the medication that he was receiving previously. And there were two other meds that he has started to receive. And those two meds were not working. And that created a lot of frustration because after so many years that a person was receiving a medication and you knew how to handle him, but then they changed the meds. And I asked Dr. Welfi, do you know that they changed his treatment? No, everything has been clarified. We decided not to change his treatment. So there was an issue because they decided not to change the treatment, but then they decided to add two meds that uh, my husband had not taken before. Thank you, Miss Anna. I have a second question. I would like to know more about the investigation into the death of your husband. There were any inquiries. Um, how do you 
felt during the legal proceedings in Panama. I'm still uh, dealing with a proceeding and investigation. I had to testify before the Office of the Public Prosecutor, but there were no, there was no progress. Then we have the complaint regarding Dr. Welfi, and I, what I can say is that on the first occasions with the, when the news appeared on the paper at home, we were really afraid because they called me. They told me that they were calling me on behalf of the Attorney General, Ana Matilde Gomez, that she needed to know what had happened. But I did not answer those phone calls because I thought that that was not the best way to solve things. And then they called me another time and they asked me if I knew who I was facing. And I think that because of that legal proceeding, investigation, the investigation continued and uh, the investigation has not stopped. We have been for in this situation for 14 years so far. We testify, we present recordings or videos, and but we had to also testify in the foreign ministry. We had to testify before the experts. And there were a lot of things that arose from all this process. And this has no end. And I need this to end right now. Whatever it ends up happening, I want this to end. Thank you, Ms. Anna. We would like to again share our affection, our empathy with you. And once again, thank you for being here, for raising your voice, for sharing your suffering with us. And we would like to express the commitment of the commission to you. Now we would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state. Uh, Marcel Pena, doctor, will have 10 minutes. Then we have 10 minutes for questions on the side of the state and 10 minutes on the side of the petitioners and then the ISCHR. I would like to give the floor first to Marcel, that is one of the representatives of the state. Thank you, commissioner. We will uh, prepare our presentation now. Dr. Marcel Pena, can you introduce yourself? Can you let us know when you took office? My name is uh, Marcel Pena Franco, chief of the psychiatry ward since 2020. This is a position I uh, uh, occupy as a result of a competition in the hospital. I have been president of the uh, Psychiatric Association of Panama and president of a specialist uh, doctors in the hospital. You said that you're in this position since 2020, but I think you've been there before. No, since, I'm sorry, 2000, since the year 2000. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Please, could you describe how the hospital is organized? Yes. The hospital Santo Tomas is made up by a board which is the main authority there is a general uh, director that is the person managing the hospital there are there's a series of departments uh, according to the specialties and in each department there are several services in particular ours the psychiatry ward belongs to the department of medicine. The hospital has always been considered as the people's hospital and uh, provides attention to those persons who lack uh, economic uh, resources and do not have access to private attention or other type of uh, services, uh, persons with very uh, low resources. Could you describe the normative and the administrative uh, 
proceeding that a um, doctor working in the hospital has to comply with. Yes, the norms from an administrative point of view and discipline, this is established in the internal regulations and the human resources department of the hospital. This is a, a national law which establishes the assessment each of the officials have to go through according to their performance that is carried out once a year. This is done by the immediate uh, superior of that official and it encompasses, for example, if the individual has um, has to receive any kind of uh, punishment such as suspensions from three to five days or um, depending on the kind of fault, the individual can be dismissed. When the person is uh, receives a bad evaluation after two consecutive years, the punishment is uh, his or her dismissal from the hospital. Once again, what were the flaws or infringements that led to the dismissal of Frank Gelfi? Before being dismissed, Dr. Gelfi received seven different um, punishments from uh, verbal sanctions to suspension and when you receive four evaluations with bad results, uh, that was his case, those assessments, as he, I was his superior, had to refer him to human resources so that human resources carried out an investigation to define with the legal sector what kind of um, reprimand was him to receive the dismissal how does this process how is this process carried out well there are different uh, processes according to the kind of evaluation the immediate superior uh, reviews their situation then there's an appeal to the chief of department the person can appeal once again before the director of the hospital then they can appeal to the board of the hospital, which is the maximum authority, and that exhausts all uh, proceedings. And then the person can resort to the Supreme Court of Justice, which confirms or not the punishment that has been given. But the general director of the hospital is the one confirming the dismissal. Dr. Pena, did you have the institutional authority to dismiss doc this uh, doctor? No, that was not in my power. That uh, power is in the hands of the director of the hospital. Dr. Gelfi's um, dismissal has to do with the fact that the doctor presented different complaints before, for example, the commission. No, his dismissal is related to the numerous faults that were committed by him, especially interdisciplinary uh, faults. This hospital is a teaching hospital that trains uh, other doctors and teaching plays a key role. Uh, and this was something that was not fulfilled by Dr. Gelfi. It has nothing to do with the complaint that was filed. Unit 25, for how long uh, has it existed and why Panama uh, started uh, hospitalizing uh, patients in this hospital? And also, could you mention how the uh, mental health network is organized and how a patient is treated in the psychiatry, psychiatric ward as the uh, widow of Mr. Reckoness um, made reference to a change in the medication and the doctors that were treating uh, her husband. 
the psychiatric ward was founded in 1971 as a result of the work of two important uh, doctors a minister of health and director of the children's uh, hospital and they decided to open the psychiatric ward or mental health unit in the hospital this is a fact that it was a milestone in public uh, attention regarding uh, mental health because the Pan American um, Organization of Health um, declared that uh, hospitals should have a psychiatric ward. Panama had already done this for 20 years. That's why in this field, and in particular this uh, hospital that is a pioneer, and, and they are recognized by the treatment provided by the hospital. The mental health network, well, the country is divided in different sectors, and in each uh, health center, there is a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a nurse that uh, provide attention to the persons that require help. A referral is not necessary, and there is a national mental health program that exists since 1996. There's a national program that is uh, implemented to provide attention to patients at the hospital. The standard treatment is the following. The patient is hospitalized to the emergency unit. Uh, informed consent is signed about the treatment. The patient is uh, referred to the doctor, to a psychiatrist, according to alphabetical order. No particular doctor is assigned. And when a patient uh, has uh, private attention, that one is not assigned as we want to preserve transparency and avoid someone to think the doctor is taking advantage from that attention. The norm is that the patient is admitted and the doctor is assigned in alphabetical order. And Monday and Friday, cases are discussed. All cases uh, are reviewed and in a joint way we decide the treatment these patient the patients are going to receive thank you these are the questions from the estate thank you for your questions now i will give the floor to the petitioners to the estate thank you good afternoon honorable members of the Inter-American Commission. We cannot hear you. Could the witness say if at any point in when you were a doctor in the psychiatric ward of the Santo Tomas Hospital, Dr. Welfi was chief of such psychiatric uh, department in the hospital. If that is the case, how Dr. Welfi got that position and whether at that time Dr. Guelfi was your immediate superior. No, I don't know how he became chief of the department. I believe he went through a competition. When I got to the hospital, Dr. Guelfi was my immediate superior for six months. And after that period, the, uh, his position, which uh, lasts for five years, concluded. So there was a new competition. And 
Due to my credits and my expert experience, I was given that position. Could the witness say in which year you started working in the psychiatric ward in Santo Tomas Hospital? And if possible, could you say what was the ruling political party at that time? I started working in the hospital in 1999. I do not pay attention to the political part. I do not belong to any political party. And my work is to provide attention to uh, patients. Could the witness say what was the relation between Dr. Welfi and you for the period in which the uh, Dr. Welfi was chief of the psychiatric ward? I could say it was the a relation of, uh, that is common. We shared training for three years as residents. We did that training period together. We never had any problems for that period in which he was my superior. I accepted the normative according to the hospital's regulations. Dr. Frank Welfi got to got to be chief of the psychiatric ward in Santo Tomas Hospital after competition because that's the what is established by the regulations of the hospital. Could you explain to the commissioners and everyone present here today why Dr. Gelfi, after getting to his position through competition, what were the reasons why he was dismissed? It is very simple. Competitions within the hospital are carried out every five years. When Dr. Guelfi is not dismissed, but he um, participates in the competition with me, I win that competition and he's not dismissed. He stops being chief of the department because he did not win the competition. I was the other person participating as candidate to be chief of the department that happens in the hospital as a whole. There is an investigation that has been carried out by the ambassador's uh, office in Panama. And that investigation and action concluded with a provision 271A slash 98 in July 1998. And the conclusion of that provision, among other things, the ambulance person concludes to morally sanction Dr. Idelivia Moreno de Rivera, for a uh, former Ministry of Health, as lack of compliance with the requirements for the competition when it when the chief of the psychiatric ward in the Santo Tomas Hospital was elected. That resolution is a consequence of the um, appointment made to you as chief of the psychiatric ward in the hospital after the challenges posed by the uh, different complaints presented before the ambulance person's office as there were several irregularities in your presentation. Are you aware of that resolution? 
Perdón. ¿Usted conoce esa resolución? No. Are you aware of that resolution? No, I'm not aware of that. So I would like to ask you if you have said here that the competition to choose the chief of the psychiatric ward in Santo Tomas Hospital, once Dr. Frank Welfi was replaced, was a transparent competition. Why the medical staff questions this process and why does this resolution exist? Competitions within the hospital, the person is entitled to appeal the result of the competition. I believe I'm aware of this. Dr. Guelfi appealed the first time he competed against me to be chief of the department and the teaching committee that uh, reviewed competitions defined that there were no irregularities. Um, Doctor, the for, former ministry uh, that you mentioned did not participate and I was chosen as chief of the department. Uh, afterwards, in the same way, I presented my credits, my credentials, and I had uh, more credentials than Dr. Kelvin. I was uh, chosen once again after competing with him against him for a second time. As far as I know, Dr. Kelfi has a master's degree. Can I speak? Dr. Pena, in the resolution uh, issued by the ombudsman's office, the ombudsperson uh, morally punished Dr. Rivera as former Ministry of Health due to the lack of compliance of the requirements um, in this uh, competition within the psychiatric unit because you did not comply with the requirements requirements to be appointed as chief of the psychiatric ward. In the second point of the resolution, it was declared that the former Ministry of Health violated uh, Dr. Gelfi's human rights and the, gov the president of the Republic, Moscosa, and the new Ministry of Health had to um, provide reparation to Dr. Gelfi due to the violations committed by Dr. Rivera as uh, he's recognized as doctor category one, as he uh, complied with all the requirements to be appointed as uh, chief of the department. And according to the Amos person, you did not comply with all the requirements of the competition. The Minister of Health had nothing to do with the competition. And when the documents are filed for the competition, uh, the teaching coordinator of the hospital reviewed all the hospital. And that's a person who determines whether a candidate complies with the requirements to be a candidate in that competition. And both Dr. Welfi and myself, we both complied it with the requirements to be a specialist of the first category in psychiatry and to provide services for eight hours. So we, both of us, we both complied with all the requirements. I don't know what's the role of Minister Rivera. She was not aware even of the competition because that was not her role. The teaching commission of the Santo Tomas Hospital was in charge of the competition. That was its role. According to statements and testimonies made by Ms. Ana Zapata, with uh, Mr. Requenes, when she appeared before you looking for attention for her husband due to 
the fact that the treatment that was being provided that you had recommended was not working for Mr. Requenes. Ms. Zapata said that you treated her in a specific way. Is it common that patient family members and patients receive the treatment that you gave to Ms. Ana Zapata? And if that's true, we would like to know why you treated her and the patient like that. Sorry, we are running out of time. It was my mistake. So this question uh, can be answered by the state uh, representatives later. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleagues to know whether they have questions. Commissioner Margaret, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, Dr. Penner, um, if I could uh, um, ask you a couple of questions. Um, could you could you tell us how long um, Dr. Gelfi was employed um, at the hospital, and was he employed to merely work in the as, as a in the teaching uh, uh, part of the hospital, or specifically to treat patients in the psychiatric ward. Uh, what I can say is that Dr. Welfi was hired to perform both roles a doctor that starts working in Santo Tomas Hospital is committed to treating patients, but also to conducting teaching activities, to teach those doctors that are being trained because they could be general practitioners or specialists. When Dr. Welfi started to work at Santo Tomas Hospital, I don't know when he started to work there because he started to work there before me. I was the general chief of the regional and metropolitan area of health. And then I uh, participated in the competition for the Santo Tomas Hospital. The Santo Tomas Hospital is a teaching hospital and also deals with the treatment of patients. Thank you. And um, could you, I, I, I didn't get any specifics. Um, you were referring to Dr. Gelfi having received seven different punishments, verbal, from verbal ones to suspensions in the course of his work. Was this in relation to teaching the teaching part of his work or in relation to his treatment of patients? You, you gave no specifics about it. You just spoke in general terms, uh, especially it's, it's very important for us to understand, especially as his actions, according to you, resulted in his ultimate dismissal. So could you be speak of these things specifically, what exactly did he do wrong? What were his infractions? As he was accused of. First, as I said, this hospital treats patients and at the same time is a teaching hospital. Yes. Both activities are considered at the same level for the hospital. In terms of the punishments and sanctions to Dr. Welfi, there were two types of sanctions. There were sanctions because he did not comply with his teaching activities. 
he did not participate to t in teaching meet meetings that are mandatory for all the officers at the hospital. But at the same time, Dr. Welty was sanctioned for not complying uh, or for failing to treat patients. Especially, he was sanctioned, for example, on one occasion, because for 10 days, he did not treat a patient for whom he was in charge. Uh, the regulations of the hospital said that we need to evaluate the patient and to write in their record every day. And on one of the occasions in which Dr. Welfi was sanctioned was because during or for 10 days, he did not take care of a patient. So the sanctions have to do with the care of the patients, but also regarding his teaching role because he did not have an active role. Thank you. Um, and um, is, it, is it not true that Dr. Welfi was in fact ultimately dismissed because he um, acted as a whistleblower for um, infractions which were happening in the hospital uh, um, with staff, doctors, and patients. Isn't that a fact? And that he received a, a oh, reparation sure. for that, for having, I, I conclude, being wrongfully dismissed. He became a, a whistleblower. He, he made uh, uh, made uh, uh, made statements and opened the door to infractions which were happening in the in the hospital to patients which were not in their interest. First of all, I need to say that the Santo Tomas Hospital does not consider that the human rights of the patients have been violated. Second, I answered this question before. Dr. Welfi was dismissed, not because he presented complaints. He was dismissed because his performance was poor at the institution for four years in a row. He received bad evaluations for four years. He appealed, her, his situation was reconsidered uh, by the chief of the department, by the chief of the hospital board, and also by the Supreme Court of Justice. And all these instances consider that the evaluations of his performance were correct and that the reason why he was dismissed was because of his uh, poor performance. Um, uh, thank, thank you, doctor. That really was not the gravamen of my question, but thank you for your answer. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Joel. Thank you, Madam President. I have a couple of questions for Dr. Pena. The first one is to check uh that since 2000 you uh were the chosen candidate of four competitions now in fact there were two competitions because of the some uh, new rearrangements at hospital competitions are not open since 2012 2013 there have been no competitions now the association of specialists is requesting for those competitions to be reopened. But on the two occasions that there was a competition, I won those competitions. There were two competitions. Thank you for that detailed information. The second question that I have has to do with the consent of the patient and uh, family members. I would like to know um, if the, how the hospital uh, conducts prior consent of the patient before admission and how the hospital obtains the consent before changing a treatment. The informed consent is a document that should be signed by the family, mem uh, family member of the patient if the patient is not 
uh, able to sign the informed consent. If without that consent, the patient cannot be admitted. The family member signs by saying that the person is well aware that the hospital will provide treatment. The changes in the administrative, uh, in uh, the changes of treatment are do not require a consent. The treatment is changed because of the evaluation of our team. We have a team that includes psychiatrists, psychologists, nurses, and we discuss and analyze the cases two days a week uh, that takes uh, two to three hours. We analyze case by case. Uh, and after that, the team determines and approves the treatment that a patient will be administered. Um, the treatment that the patient receives, whether inside the hospital or through external consultations or visits, that those all those treatments are reevaluated. And if a patient requires admission to the hospital, that means that the patient was not receiving the adequate treatment to improve. In this specific case, Mr. Requenes received a treatment that was previously discussed by the team and uh, he was released because he was in a very good condition because he has shown improvements because of the treatment that he received during his hospitalization. Thank you. We are running out of time, so we will continue with the final part that is the allegations of the parties. I would like to give the floor to the state for its final allegations. Thank you, Madam Vice President. My name is Ariana Perez. I'm Chief of the Human Rights Department of the Forest of Panama. First, we would like to thank the petitioners for being to the for being in the hearing, and also uh, we would like to thank the victims, and we would like to thank the officials and the commissioners of the Inter-American Commission and the team led by Marisol, Marisol Blanchard. In the hearing uh, title, uh, we see that Santo Tomas Hospital is considered a psychiatric, uh, psychiatric hospital, but to be honest, it's a people's hospital for those who have no um, health insurance. We would like to establish two differentiated facts that should be addressed by the Inter-American Commission in the instant case. The first had to do with the allegations made by Frank Welfi that says that because of the complaints he presented regarding the violations of human rights of the patients at the Santo Tomas Hospital, he suffered labor harassment and that he had no access to justice. The state will show how Dr. Welfi had a reiterated conduct since 1996 when he presented his first complaint before the IACHR. His goal was to present complaints against different public officials to his own benefit. The state has will also show that it has respected the rights of Dr. Welfi according to articles eight and 25 of the American Convention. Also the state will talk about the allegations made by the patients regarding the instant case 12934A, taking into consideration articles 4, 5, 8, and 25 of the American Convention. Madam President, with regard to the labor harassment and the dismissal of Dr. Welfi, the state would like to make the following observations. First, the petitioner is a psychiatrist in Panama since April 1980 to March 1989. He worked in a, hospital, a public hospital in 1984. He moved to Brazil to conduct um, PhD, a master degree in the University of Rio de Janeiro. After that, he returned to his work. And this ended up in a complaint before uh, against the state that was presented before the IACHR, but that petition was not admitted by the Inter-American Commission. Then in 1992, he started to work 
uh, in the public sector until 2008. And he was dismissed, taking into consideration Article uh, 172 of law number nine, and also taking into consideration the articles of the Santo Tomas Hospital because of the evaluations that said that her, his performance was not, uh, was poor. Also, uh, the, uh, the dismissal reasons were based on the rules of procedure of the hospital. Dr. Welfi could present remedies uh, to appeal that decision until the judgment of the Supreme Court of Justice that approved all the actions conducted to dismiss him. Also, the allegations of Dr. Welfi were against Ma Dr. Marcel Pena. Taking into consideration the applicable regulations, Dr. Pena did not have the authority nor the power to make that decision. That decision was made by the highest authority of the hospital. The reasoning of, for his dismissal had to do with his last two evaluations of bad performance in 2007. And also uh, there were other sanctions against him because of the lack to comply with his responsibilities. Those uh, actions have to do that he considered himself an activist of patients at the psychiatric ward. Also, most of those demands were related to his uh, sanctions. What he did is use those to use those sanctions to recuse his superiors. This is shown also in the documents of the Office of the Public Prosecutor in the administrative proceeding that he conducted against his dismissal. There is enough evidence that Dr. Welfi used sensitive information on, about the patients in order to conduct his reports or complaints against the hospital. Taking into consideration those complaints, the hospital conducted the necessary investigations to guarantee the rights of the patients through due process of law. All those proceedings were conducted according to legal standards and um, the complaints about uh, malpractice and negligence were not proved. Also, um, after the different complaints the, against the services, what we see is that the violations of the human rights against the patients have nothing to do with his dismissal. The Inter-American Commission should analyze the violations of Article 8 and 25. In other rulings, uh, what we see is that it has been an analysis regarding the pronouncements and taking into consideration that the proceedings require technical knowledge. This also, in, we need to say that the proceedings included all the guarantees of due process of law. And this led to the different analysis of legal administrative authorities taking into consideration the complaints presented in an abusive way by Dr. Welfi. The proceeding has lasted for over 20 years. The state rejects that those alleged violations of human rights regarding the right to uh, physical and mental integrity taken into consideration Article 8 and 25 have been committed because it has been proved that Dr. Welfi was uh, subject to a proceeding that was legal and that he had access to all the remedies to exert his rights. The system has said that the results of the proceedings uh, did not represent a violation of Dr. Welfi's rights. Taking into consideration the other aspect of the complaint regarding the alleged violations of the human rights of the patients, the state would like to express its solidarity with the family members of the patients because of the different barriers that they have to face uh, along the proceedings. Panama is a signatory of those treaties that protect those most vulnerable groups in society and it rejects any act that implies bad treatment of any vulnerable group. And therefore it believes that people should be treated under the same standards. 
um, Panama has been one of the mo first countries that promoted the lack of institutionalization of persons with mental health issues and had promoted the creation of a specific words such as word number 25 of the Santo Tomal Tomas Hospital. Now we will talk about the health uh, or the mental health services provided by our hospital. Uh, regarding the allegations, we also uh, make reference uh, to that, but we will provide more information in our report that we are going to submit before the commission. We also would like to say that the complaints presented by the petitioner have been considered. We would like to repeat that the um, forensic service concluded that there was no negligence nor mal. Uh, bad practice in the Santo Tomas Hospital. And also the report said that the actions uh, taken by the Santo Tomas Hospital could not prevent the situation of the patients. Also, it's important to say some of the proceedings were uh, decided by the municipal court of, San, uh, of the area. And those decisions were confirmed in 2010 and they indicated that there was no evidence that the treatment nor the visits had an impact on the clinical progression of the patient. The state is well aware of the interpretations of the American Convention and it's the guarantor of the rights of those who are under its custody and it has the obligations to guarantee the conditions for a dignified life and that this is part of its obligation to protect life and personal integrity and to guarantee medical attention. And this is derived from its obligation four and five of the American Convention, taking addition some of the paragraphs of the judgments against Brazil. Sorry, you are running out of time. Thank you to the representatives of the state for your allegations. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleagues, Commissioner Margaret, please, you have the floor. Um, <clears throat> thank you, um, Madam um, President. Um, the, I have the honor to address um, the esteemed member of the uh, representatives of the state from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, can, uh, please, um, if you can, add to my understanding of this matter. There was, in fact, a friendly settlement agreement um, which was reached in this matter, and, I th and if, if my, my information is correct, which was duly executed by the parties um, um, uh, for the interests of Mrs. Zapata and her mm. family um, in relation to her deceased husband. Um, could you explain why that when the settlement was not implemented and why it is still today unimplemented. Um, and secondly, was there any indication that Dr. Penner in treating uh, Mrs. Zapata's husband anticipated his dangerous uh, inclination towards suicide? during his treatment? Uh, and if not, why was he unable to, um, in, to notice this fact? Um, and secondly, I, from what I heard from your, your allegations, you say that Dr. Dr. Um, Gilfey um, was, the end product was in fact a whistleblower that he, he made public confidential information and critiques of his colleagues. Um, and you, 
do you agree on uh, that for that reason that his dismissal uh, was in ultimately had to be repaired by the state and he was granted reparations. Thank you. Good afternoon. I just wanted to ask to the ad hoc secretary. I understand that the petitionary party, petitioning party needs to present uh, their allegations. Is that the case? Madam ad hoc secretary, could you clarify this? I am sorry, I have to leave the meeting. I will request my colleague Joel to continue presiding this uh, hearing, but I have a family emergency here and I have to leave. I would like to thank both parties and Commissioner Joel will continue as president of this hearing. And then I will give the floor to Marisol. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. We will listen to the ad hoc executive secretary. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, the commission will give the floor afterwards to the petitioning party to present their allegations. So now we need to answer the questions made by Commissioner Macaulay, and then you will give the floor to the petitioners. Is that the case? Yes, that's right, Doctor. The uh, Commissioner Macaulay has already uh, made her questions. You can answer her, and we will give the floor to the petitioners. We have run out of time, but it's important to complete this hearing. I want to take advantage of the time because we. I know we are running out of time. I think it's important to say, because it has been mentioned several times, about this friendly settlement agreement. There's a rule saying that if this agreement has not been accepted, it has no legal uh, if one party withdraws from the agreement, the uh, friendly settlement agreement is not valid. So it's very important for commissioners that this um, agreement was not uh, approved or homologated by the state and that the state withdrew uh, in a timely manner those allegations cannot be used against the state as that is how the uh, Inter-American Commission has uh, regulations about that. And he, regarding questions related to Gavi and his dismissal and the treatment of Mr. Reganes, we don't have enough time to explain that, but we are going to provide a written and complete report in that regard. Thank you for your answer. We have taken down notes and will we be receiving any information you would like to send to us? I would like to give the floor to the petitioners for their final uh, comments. Thank you. Honorable commissioners and representatives of the state of Panama, I the first part has to do with antecedents of the case that have already been mentioned by the commission, but I want to say that Guelfi and the other petitioners um, decided to carry out three different criminal actions. Guelfi was dismissed uh, by following due process as all uh, resources were exhausted, he uh, resorted to the Supreme Court that declared that his dismissal was not uh, legal and there was a lack of a marriage report. Wealthy requested the investigation about the patients to be reopened and this request was denied by the authorities. 
wealthy and the patients whose um, rights have been violated, they have not received any protection or reparation, although in July 2019, there was a friendly settlement agreement that the current government did not comply with. This friendly settlement was uh, uh, countered with the participation and there have been several um, med experts reports uh, carried out during this period to determine the international responsibility of the state regarding Collado and Reconez, the deceased patients, we cannot deny the relation between the lack of medical attention, ne negligent attention and their deaths as their deaths uh, are the responsibility of the state. In the case of Collado, he was deprived of liberty, hospitalized in the psychiatric ward in Santo Tomas. Collado, his uh, right to life and personal integrity were violated according to the jurisprudence of the Inter-American Court in the Vera, against, uh, Vera case against Ecuador. In the case of Requenes, this channel, this, um, uh, his attention was in charge of uh, Mr. Uh, Gelfi, but afterward he was hospitalized in Santo Tomas Hospital and Dr. Pena was his doctor at that time. They decided to change all his medication and suspend the antidepressant medication. He had a high suicidal tendency and Reconez committed suicide in November 2004, 14 days after being discharged. He was found by his 12-year-old uh, daughter before taking his life, Rekenes and his relative went to the hospital several times asking for medical attention, being rejected by the medical staff. Thus, Rekenes was uh, suffered the violation of his right to life. In the uh, express report in case to uh, 12934, the medical expert concluded that all cases reviewed by him, um, medical histories, are the result of uh, malpractice and negligent medical attention. Um, two of them can be considered um, wrongful murders. The uh, wife of uh, Mr. Ray Kenneth warned about the uh, danger brought up by the change in his medication and treatment. In this case, there was a multiple intersectional discrimination. Ray Kenneth was uh, discriminated because he was poor with a mental disability and his uh, doctor and psychologist uh, said that he was uh, homosexual. And Ana Zapata said that do the doctor has said uh, to her whether she had not realized that he was a homosexual. The health service that we really received lack minimal requirements Regarding surviving uh, patients in case 12934, their personal integrity were violated by actions and omissions in the evidence that can be found in the file, which have been proven by the medical expert appointed for this case. The estate uh, uh, omissions and detect the right health the lack of consent in the change of the doctors and medications violate uh, Article 713 of the Convention. There was a multiple uh, discrimination making vulnerable psychiatric patients. All events suffered by the patients were denounced before competent authorities, but investigations were carried out in an irregular and negligent way because the, the goal has never been to determine the truth of the facts and punish the responsible ones. So the commission has to assess the, uh, the fact that the state has been able to preserve, to maintain impunity. The right to justice has been violated. The state has violated his right to live a healthy life as chief of the psychiatric ward of the um, hospital, 
Gertzi has also also has several rights violated. The state should guarantee all means to preserve the lives of these persons. Frank Welfi has been harassed due to his actions trying to find justice for the events suffered by psychiatric patients. This has been proved by the Medical Express report that is part of the Friendly Settlement Agreement. Regarding Article 11 of the Convention, it has been proved that the um, victim has been treated as a uh, wrongful official. He suffered public harassment and his honor and dignity have not been preserved. This was based on performance uh, reports um, because he was filing complaints due to the ill treatment suffered by the uh, patients. At the same time, 2008, the year in which Gelfi was dismissed, there was no element to uh, dismiss the person in charge of assessing the performance. The state of Panama did not comply with basic normative to adapt its uh, local legislation to guarantee um, basic rights, such as Article 1, of the convention. In Lopez Lona, the court pointed out that uh, guarantees in Article 8 of the convention should be guaranteed only to protect the rights of the persons. Regarding his dismissal, the Supreme Court of Justice has omitted a merits uh, report on the uh, case without taking into account the rights that were at stake. One of the judges of the Supreme Court of Justice, Espada Fora Franco, who is a relative of Dr. Pena Franco. That's why there is uh, influence due to their relation with Dr. Pena. That's why in this hearing, we request commission to give priority to this case and issuing its merits report and forwarding this case to Inter-American Court we would like to request precautionary measures um, to protect citizens. Considering the potential risk we go through and the fear we all um, feel towards the uh, state, the Inter-American court has already expressed the importance of the celerity of the cases for those persons in situation of vulnerability. This case is an opportunity for the commission to continue developing doctrine in terms of mental disabilities and take into account the, uh, the different uh, violations against victims who suffer mental disabilities. This uh, shows this a widely range of rights uh, have been violated. Justice for the victims should not be delayed. This case started 17 years ago which shows the um, work carried out by the Department of the Commission in order to establish the friendly settlement, which has not been respected by state authorities without providing any uh, reasoning or explanation about how they did not comply with this friendly settlement. Regarding the protection of human rights, in the region, it is important for the Commission to issue this um, report. We have run out of time, but I would like to ask Commissioner Macaulay whether she has any question for the petitioners. And if that is the case, please send your answer by email in written. Yes, um, uh, very quickly, Mr. President, uh, thank you. Um, to the petitioners, um, of the complaints which were filed in this case, are there any proceedings still pending resolution? That's the first question. And the second one is, do you consider that the existing legal framework in Panama 
is compatible with international law for the protection of the rights of patients with mental disabilities and to prevent them from being discriminated against. Um, Gracias. And um, how was the alleged labor persecution of Dr. Frank Guilford reported and what was the state's response? Thank you. Yeah. Gracias a usted, comisionada. Hemos agotado nuestro... Thank you, Commissioner. We have run out of time. I will ask the petitioners to send the answers in written and the same to the representatives of the state. Any further information that you would like to provide regarding the merits of the case or the allegations that have been expressed here, you can send that information in written. I would like to thank all persons present here today and especially to recognize widow, her representation, and also to the representatives of the estate. Have a nice day. I adjourn this hearing. Thank you. Thank you.